So this is a Chinese abacus. It has uh, beads on the top and beads on the bottom. And this is a counting frame or an abacus. It's got a top and bottom beam, the two side beams. It has this middle beam, which is where we do our counting. Um, these beads on the top are called um, heaven beads, heavenly beads, and these on the bottom are called earthly beads. And so this is how um, we work. This has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 different columns. So we have ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, million, ten million, hundred million, billion, ten billion, hundred billion, trillion. So we have enough um, to do uh, quite a bit of calculating uh, with the 13 columns. There are some that um, have uh, more columns than that. But this is fairly standard. Uh, borrowed this from the math department um, up in Hibbard. The basic use of an abacus. Um, so we have our ones, tens, hundreds. So if I want to count, so these beads up on the top are worth five. These down below are worth one. So if I wanted to take five, six, that would be six. Let me count um, up to 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, the ten, I can exchange these two fives for that ten. So, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Subtract, uh, uh, move those five down for a five. And so we have ten and five for fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, which I can then exchange this 5 and this 5 for that 10. So I have two 10s or 20. My project is about the Chinese abacus, which I will introduce and explain here in a little bit. But in answer to the first question, on the answer sheet, um, it's a, my, my project is specifically about the Chinese abacus. And so the question is, where is it situated? Where did it come from geographically and what's the time period surrounding it? So, dealing with the geography of it, uh, first off, um, the abacus was originally known as a counting frame, but before that it was a counting tray. They used it as a, as a tray which had grooves in it, and then they would use either beans or stones to do their calculations. Um, it seems to have evolved uh, from there to a counting frame, uh, what a modern day uh, abacus would be, and that counting frame then w had a had a structure about it. But the tray itself, the counting tray, um, not that it originated, but it, it certainly dates back to the Mesot Mesopotamian area or era uh, so we're talking somewhere around 2700 to 2300 BC um, we find it in Egyptian culture we find it in Persian culture we find it in Russian culture we find it in various other cultures we find it in Greek culture around 384 to 322 BC uh, Demosthenes um, associated with the use of that. 
The actual word itself, abacus, came into being um, around 1387, though it had been used in China uh, and in the Chinese area um, dating back to the second century BC. Uh, the Chinese word for an abacus is a son pan. And the Japanese adapted the Chinese abacus uh, to create their own. So we have the time periods listed there. Geographically, it uh, is much more widespread than what I had anticipated. Now we will do some addition using a Chinese abacus. We are going to add 362 to 859. So let me clear the abacus. Everything cleared away from the center beam. We're going to start on the left side and we're going to add 800 and 300. And so what I will do here is, my, here's my singles, my tens, my hundreds. So I'm going to use five, a five, 500 bead, 600, 700, 800. I'm going to add 300 to that. 300, so one, well actually let me do it this way. Um, so if I'm going to add three, three to the eight, I'm going to add a five, and if I add, add three, then I'm going to subtract two. I'm going to exchange the two five beads for a thousand bead. So that gives me a total of 1,100. So 800 and 300 is 1,100. Now I'm going to add 50 and 60. So let's add the 60 first. So here's my tens column, five, six. So that gives me 60. I'm going to add to that 60, 50. So here's my five bead, and that gives me um, the two together. So I'm going to exchange this 10 for 100. These two five beads for, these two 50 beads for 100 bead. Now, I'm going to add 9 and 2. So here's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I'm going to add 2 to that. So if I add 2, that leaves 3. So I'm going to bring down a 5 bead and subtract 3. I'm going to exchange these two 5 beads for a 10 bead. So my answer then is 1,200. 21. So the second question is about the position of the country. Now I'm assuming um, that we're referring to a geographic location. Um, though it certainly could be answered in a cultural sense. Uh, the abacus, uh, specifically the Chinese abacus, comes from an Eastern culture. And so at the current point I'm using uh, Google um, and this is the university and right now I'm in the McIntyre Library. So let's um, zoom out a bit. if I can, um, and we're going to zoom out um, looking at the U.S. here, and we're going to move over across the Atlantic Ocean um, into uh, the Middle East. Now, Iraq is uh, is where uh, some of this uh, began because the abacus actually began 
right here in what would be modern day Iraq. Um, Mesopotamia is kind of where it began. So I'll pull up Mesopotamia and as you can see here that Mesopotamia is right in this area. Let me bring that up again. So Mesopotamia is right here um, in the borders of, of Iraq. So uh, let's um, scroll out a little bit further here and we'll uh, move out of the Middle East um, over to uh, this area here uh, which is Asia and so we'll uh, kind of zoom in and as you can see uh, China sits um, right in this area this side of Asia so you have um, India uh, to the south and west you have Mongolia um, to the to the north um, and so uh, Vietnam Cambodia Thailand um, that whole area so so the abacus that um, we that that I'm 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 that that I'm studying here um, comes from this region of China. Now I'm going to do um, some subtraction. I am going to take. 1,321 and I'm going to subtract 980. So I'm going to clear my abacus. Nothing against the beam. And I'm going to put up my 1,321. So in my thousands column there's a thousand three hundred twenty one. Now I'm going to subtract 980. Well, I cannot subtract 900. I'm going to start with a 900. I cannot subtract 900. So I'm going to exchange a thousand for two five hundreds. So now I can subtract. There's uh, 500, 600, 700. There's 800 or 800. I'm going to exchange a 500 for five single hundreds, and there's my 900. Now, I need to subtract 80. Subtracting 80, I can't subtract from 20. So I'm going to exchange a 100 speed for 250 speed. Now I can subtract, begin to subtract, I should say, the 80. So subtract 50, 60, 70. I'm still 10 short, so I exchange the 5, the 5 bead in the tens column, so 50 for 5 tens down here. Subtract one more from that for 80. So my answer is 341. So the question is, what type of mathematics was this? I'm assuming in regard to the Chinese abacus. And so uh, doing some quick research, looking at the different types of mathematics, there is my cheat sheet here. There's algebra, and I don't think that the abacus is really an algebraic um, device. Um, there's analysis and calculus, and again, I don't think that the Chinese abacus fits into that. There's geometry, though it certainly could be used for geometry. 
I don't find uh, the abacus falling into that realm either. Applied mathematics tends to be based on computer uh, work, so I don't find it working there either. And so then my fallback position is to answer that question um, as arithmetic, though I'm not quite sure the difference, but arithmetic is a type of mathematics. Uh, so the Chinese abacus is about counting, it's about basic math functions, and so I, I think arithmetic would be uh, where I would land on that, on that answer. With the abacus here, um, we're going to do some uh, basic multiplication. Um, and so let me clear this out. So I have, uh, I have my, my heavenly beads, five in each column. I have my earthly beads, five in each column. And so I will count everything up according up up against this beam so um, this may not be the proper use of an abacus but I will um, start uh, with it this way because it helps me so I want to take 13 times 17 so I'm going to use um, make this a a 10 bead and this will be a three bead. So I have 13 and I'm going to leave a column empty and then I'm going to take that times 17. So here's 10 and 5 is 15 and two beads is 17. So I want to multiply those two together. So now first off let's take it and it's a little bit different uh, but we're going to take this, uh, the 10 of the 17 times the 13. And so to do that, this would be the ones column, 10s column, 100s column. So 10 times 13. So I'll leave this one alone. I'll put 3 here and 1 here. So I have 130 for my first calculation. So that takes care of this, the 10 times the 13. Now I want to take the 7 times 10. So 7 times 10 is 70. So I'm going to add a 5 for 50, 60, 70. That gives me the 70. Now because I have 10 here in the middle, I'm going to clear this and add a hundred uh, bead. Now that leaves seven times three remaining and seven times three is 21 so I'm going to put two beads up in the tens column and one bead up in the single column and so my answer is 221. So question number four, what contributions did they make to mathematics? Referring to the Chinese abacus. Um, so doing some quick research, um, it, it, it seems that uh, the third century um, AD where the um, uh, math development had had stalled uh, in Europe and from 300 AD to approximately 1300 AD um, the Chinese had developed um, quite quite a bit of information and knowledge about about math um, and it was from that time that um, there was a, a flow back uh, and not terribly long after that 
uh, Leonardo Fibonacci um, uh, began his work in mathematics. Question five, are there parts of mathematics discovered that are still taught in schools today? If so, what? So abacuses were used um, during the time that we even had basic calculators, uh, certainly through the times that we used a slide rule. I actually had a slide rule um, when I was in middle school or junior high. Um, and so the abacus was quite frequently used. Uh, today it's more of a novelty um, learning uh, aspect. Uh, it's still taught and people still use it, but it's if you want to do calculations, typically um, you'll use a calculator rather than a Chinese abacus. <clears throat> we'll do some division with the abacus and um, we'll just play with this a little bit just to get an idea of how to divide on an abacus. I, uh, I really don't have a good resource for this so I'm going to kind of peg away at it the best I can. So I'm going to set up the 182 on the right hand side so 150, 80, 2. And I'm going, to, I'm going to divide 182 with 26. So 25, 26. I have 150, 60, 70, 82. Excuse me. Now, I'm not sure exactly how many 26s. Uh, we'll go into 182, but I know that 4, 4 times 25 is 100, so um, we'll just start with 4. So I'm going to um, take 4 times 26. Well, 4 times 2 is 80, so I'll bring down a 5. Actually, we'll move it over here. A 5 and 3, that gives me 80, and then 4 times 5, 4 times 5 is 20, so we'll add 20 there. And 4 times 1 is 4, so we'll bring in 4. So I have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so I have 100. So I can exchange this for this, which gives me 104. So now I'm going to subtract the 100 from the 100, I'm going to subtract 4 from 50, 60, 70, 82. I'm going to subtract 4 from 82. So in order to do that, I'm going to subtract 2 from the 2. So now I just need to subtract 2 from 5, 6, 5, 6, 7, 80. So that would be 78. So 5, 6, 7, drop the 10, bring down the 5, and these 2, bring back 2. So that leaves me with 5, 6, 7, 75, 76, 77, 78. So I think I can get at least two more in there. So let's, um, I have four. So then let's make this a total of 6. So 2 times 20 is 40. So I'm going to subtract 40. So bring the 5 up. So I just subtracted 40. And 2 times 6 is 12. So I'm going to subtract a 10 and two ones. That gives me 12. Now I have 25, 26 left. I have 26 so I can do one more. So that gives me, I have 6, so 7 
gives me the 26. So the answer is 567. 7, 26 goes into 182 seven times. Question number six, give some examples of the types of problems solved by this person culture. So the Chinese had taken uh, the counting tray uh, from the um, Middle uh, East and had adopted it for their own purposes. Uh, the Chinese uh, had developed their abacus. Uh, it was adapted to other cultures, including the Japanese as well. Uh, this, this device is primarily for counting. Um, it's a very quick way of making calculations, primarily multiplication, addition, subtraction, division, uh, which are the primary uses uh, of the device.